All right, so, is it bright enough? This, this beginning bit, I'm very, it takes a while. <laughs> For me to actually get it started, it takes a while. Okay, so, hello, I'm here with Lena. Me. That's Lena. Lena is a long time friend of mine, a very good friend and a very old friend. Not that she's old, because you're not. <laughs> she's young. She's a spring chicken. I'm an aged friend. But I'm... she's with, yeah, we've been friends for a long time. I keep forgetting where to look all the time. Mm -hmm. It's there. Where do I look? There. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, so, I always say so. 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 So, so but. So. So today, <laughs> oh my gosh, we're all done. So today I'm talking to Lena. Um, we're talking about mental health. As you know, I'm doing the 31 Days of Loving Your Brain project, um, where I just want to talk about mental health issues with all different kinds of people, all different kinds of conditions, and raise awareness, and also encourage people to just talk about their stuff, talk about their brain, acknowledge their brain, acknowledge their quirks, that yeah. might actually be something. So yeah. <clears throat> Hold on. <laughs> Today's conversation with Lena is a, is a little bit different because we're not talking about her mental health, we're talking about her dad's. Yeah. Um, and her dad's got OCD, which is Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. I keep thinking I've got to memorise things. This is not EastEnders. It's not. I've got something that I'm going to read which gives a good short explanation of what OCD actually is because when I hear about OCD I just think of people that are like super neat or over the top with cleaning. I've learned a little bit more recently but I'm sure a lot of you probably thought the same like okay OCD yeah someone that's a bit over the top but it's actually more than that and those are the those are the effects of a person with OCD. So mm -hmm. it says here that people that suffer with OCD get unwanted no, let me not look up like I'm doing it. Like, you know on uh, the news. Uh, yeah, they get... No, I'll just, I'll just look down. You can look down. I'll look down. Why am I going to all lean like this? A person with OCD suffer from unwanted and disturbing thoughts, images or urges, also known as obsessions, that intrude a person's mind and cause huge anxiety or discomfort, which a person tries to reduce by engaging in repetitive behaviours or mental acts. So... The fact that a person with a, um, sorry, with OCD will be very like on their cleaning Obsessed, or, yeah. or tapping stuff. They are actually doing that stuff because they're getting disturbing images, urges and thoughts in their mind. So it's like a, a distraction. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> Lena, um, her dad was diagnosed with OCD, yeah. depression and anxiety five years ago. Yeah. But you knew he had it already, didn't you? My whole life and I'm 33. Wow. My whole life. There isn't a time I don't remember him doing a symptom. Yeah. So what kind of like, things? Like what? So my dad's one wasn't so much about the cleanliness because my mum could have done with her help, to be honest. His whole thing was when everyone's gone to sleep, he has to go around every light switch and like do them 20 times. But what? Like flick them? Flick them 20 times. I don't know how he worked it out, but by the time he gets to the bottom one, it's obviously off. But he does that going around the whole house, down, starting from downstairs all Every the way Every single up. room? Every single room. So then he'd get to my room, open the door. As your light goes on and off? On and off. So I could have been in my bed. Luckily, I'm a heavy sleeper, but I could yeah. have been in my bed for an hour by the time he gets around to doing it. My light wow. could be off, but then that's happening. It's caused wars. <laughs> it's oh, caused wars I can in my imagine. house. Imagine. Imagine um, you're, but you weren't able to sleep and you just get to sleep and then and the light boom, just starts boom, flickering. Boom. When you're a child... You don't really know what's normal and what's not. You're learning from adults, obviously. So yeah, you, yeah. you're a child and See, this is this is the type of stuff. And my mum, bless her soul, she wasn't much of a complainer. So the wars happened a lot more with me and my brother as we got older. My mum just kind of was so used to my dad. And she's a heavy sleeper as well. She just turned a blind eye. So yeah. growing up, if she's not going ham, for us to know that... Who, your mum? Yeah, for my mum to go ham. If she's not going ham, then... This is normal stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the sleepovers are happening. People's not doing this in other people's houses. So you get to a certain age okay. where you're like, hang on a minute. It's so okay. you didn't invite people to stay over? No, do you know what? My Just dad, lock them in your room. My dad wasn't that guy. Again, like visitors. Yeah. We battled it, me and my brother. Yeah. I'm having my friends come around, I don't care. And don't he was know. so nice, that's the thing, because as soon as they walk through the door, he has to put on a show, hi, welcome, come in. Yeah, you know, at least he could do that. Some people can't. But we'd be in our in my room and I can hear him pacing the corridors. Oh my god. And I'm talking louder to try and distract you so you don't notice it. Yeah, but yeah. I know what my dad's doing out there. He's getting mad because right now he can't be himself. 
he's concerned, he's worried. Does does your mother know that you're in the house? Oh, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, so, like, I need to watch these kids now. I'm responsible for other people's children. So not only is your dad not able to relax because he's thinking, is Penny's, does Penny's parents know where yeah, she is? He yeah. wants you all in at six so he can lock up the doors. But also, this is all behaviours of him worrying to the highest degree. We went to sleepovers. Yeah, when you went to sleepovers, you realised... Yeah, when I okay, went to sleepovers. this doesn't happen with every other one Exactly. Else. And I was very young at that point to realise, hang on, yeah. something's wrong with my dad. But then he's hiding it as well. Okay. And I'm a child, so I don't know he's hiding it. But he's hiding stuff. it from who? From everyone. So we don't get much visitors coming to us because okay. my dad's not opening doors. Unexpected. Yeah. He's not doing all of this. My mum is, if she's home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she's not, then my dad's at home alone and that's how he likes it. Yeah. Then he's doing stuff when he comes out the house. He can't turn left, he can only turn right. What, every time he leaves? Every time. But as a child, we don't know what's going on, so we've got to wait for him to turn right, go around the lamppost, touch it with the inner side of his foot. Oh, like, what, give three it like times. a like, like, free like, tap? Three taps, boom, boom, go around it, then walk towards us. But he's not turning left, ever. I knew very early on that something was wrong. Yeah. But for me to actually speak out about it and say, you're driving me mad, this isn't normal. Yeah. I was a teenager. But you were able to acknowledge, okay, look, I've got to address this. Yeah, I've got to address this. You're mad. That's what I used to say to him. And obviously yeah. it's insensitive me saying that. And I deal with my dad a specific way because I know yeah. everything that he's got. So I'm not trying to make it worse. But at the same time, it's when you're a child and you, he's not diagnosed and he's telling you, you're the one who needs to respect your elders. Yeah. <laughs> What are you gonna do? Like, you're saying you respect your elders, and these times you're the one who's doing mad stuff. Like, can I just go to sleep? I can't live like this. And I, I ended up moving out when I was 18 because I couldn't handle the yeah. constant arguments. Yeah. I used to have a curfew, and it wasn't because I had a curfew because my dad's strict, and it's only as an adult that I realized this. It was because my dad had it where he wanted everyone that lived with him in the house by six o'clock so he can do his mad bolting thing on okay. the door. And the key, same as the light, is... What, before he opens the door, before he locks it? When he's locking it, from the inside. For nighttime safety. Wow. And there's about five bolts. You can hear that when you're lying in your bed, like, all these routines that are happening before bedtime's available. And now so, he's got insomnia as well, so where... There's wow. no sleeping. There's wow. no sleeping at all, because he's always forgot he's done it, whether he's done something or he's not done it. Going to the airport, Penny. The ride to the airport is insane because A, you can only go 30 miles an hour, you can't go over bridges. What do you mean? You can only go 30 miles an hour Yeah. in any car. What, your dad? Yeah. Well, even when it's a zone where you can go faster? Yeah, no, but you can't because he's in the car. 30 miles an hour or he will get out and walk physically. <laughs> and you cannot go over bridges. So when I lived in East London, you know the A406, it does like mad over bridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Type of... My dad, I lived there for four years. Didn't visit me once. Then we found a way through Camden. But by then, I was so wound up and pissed off about the 30 miles an hour. I'm just, I can't drive you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be calling cabmen to come and pick up my dad. Ten minutes in the journey, there's beef. And he's jumped out of the cab. <laughs> and I'm well, Because on... they're going faster? Or... They're, yeah, they're not listening to him. Because now they're on an A40 and they can't do 30 miles an hour because they're getting beeped. Yeah. And, and they've gotten pissed off. They've thrown my dad out in the middle of the roads. So... This is this is yeah. a lot of stuff. It's a, yeah. This is just and you know what? It's tiny it's bit. it's sad because he's he wasn't diagnosed, so he didn't know. Like he would he would you know you'd know something's different. I think he knew something was wrong. Yeah. But I think a he's proud because he was always the man in our household. So you know, like my dad just carried me and my brother on both his shoulders and be yeah. calm down the road if we're taking too long. Like, yeah, yeah, he's that yeah, type yeah, of man. Yeah. He was a man's man. He, he went to the army, but. It's when he come out of the army that all this stuff started happening. Okay. So, so it could I have even been post-traumatic stress disorder. Absolutely, I think that that's... led, like, developed into other exactly. things. Because what I'm learning lately is that um, mental health conditions, certain ones, when they're untreated and a person hasn't been diagnosed, they lead to other things. They can yeah. trigger other things. And like personality disorders, if you have something that is like manageable, it can trigger it to become difficult. Yeah, even a simple trip to the seaside, a day trip. That can't happen, there's too many factors to factor in, if that makes sense. I believe, like, the reason I really wanted to talk out about it is because over the years, we've gone from a mental disorder that used to be funny to me, my mum, and my brother. When my dad wasn't about, and I know it sounds horrible, but we used to have laughs about it. Like, 
the lemon in his hair before the attack. Wait, wait, that... wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> you remember So this? let me, let me just yeah. say something, hold on, this lemon. <coughs> when I used to go around, Lena's dad, yeah. I, I just thought it was like... I didn't care, really I didn't much. even know, I didn't even, I thought it was his fashion. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like when you He's you're... got lemon juice dripping no, down but... his face two times. <laughs> nah, I didn't notice that, I didn't, because you know what, he weren't very like, face to face -y, was he? No, yeah. but this is where he's putting it on high, Yeah, and that's what I mean, gone. he'll be like, you're right. But I used to just think... Yeah, I think it was like a, a band. It looked like a bandana. It was a bandana. And I used to just he, think he that, had like thousands. You know how some people wear do rag at home but not outside. Yeah. I thought it was a, that kind of thing. Yeah. Like it's his do rag. Like and and you know when you got your hair done and you wear something on your hair all but day. Was, I thought it was something like that. But what Lena's told me, which I didn't notice, for this purpose. Because yeah, he put lemons it's inside. It's an old remedy that his mum told him for headaches. And he, he always had a headache, but it's because he's he's actually his brain is overworking. Yeah. Yeah. I've known my dad to do the whole house more than once. And what, I know the lights? That, yeah, to do the whole lighting thing around yeah, the house at yeah. the end of the day more than once. And that's when I know he's, not, he's having a bad... A bad day. So you've, you've told us about the um, repetitive behaviours, but um, in the definition of OCD, yeah. it says that the, the repetitive behaviours and mental acts come from the disturbing images, thoughts and um, yeah. scenarios and, and stuff. So would you say that that thing where he kind of... Like what worries where everyone is. We're um, all in a car crash if we're five minutes late. We we he's calling hospitals. It's that serious. Like it'll be at the window, we can't see you walking down from that long stretch of uh, extreme measures. Everything's so extreme. What was your question again? Sorry. Um He thinks of the worst scenario. Yeah, he does. Yes. The worst, worst scenarios ever. My dad doesn't like to talk about all these stories that he's gone through, but there'll be certain times where yeah. so he has to remind you what he's gone through. So yeah. he'll give you little snippets of certain things yeah. like you know, I've gone to the army. I didn't want to have to. I didn't want to have to do certain things, okay. or I've seen certain things. I've lost friends, and obviously, with my own diagnosis of ADHD, I'm really passionate about people who have ADHD and don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No names. That's me. Um, yeah. That's another video. <laughs> yeah. Basically, what I'm hearing is your dad had post-traumatic stress disorder (PTSD) yeah. from the war. Yeah. From oh, no, the army. No, mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but yeah, he won't go doctors. Yeah. He won't go no. doctors. So he had it. It's a, it's a condition. He's shocked and he's completely distraught sure. about what's happened. 100%. And that has now developed him to operate from fear. And because his PTSD wasn't treated because he didn't go doctors or anything. Yeah. yeah. He's not going doctors for any mental health. Yeah. Or anything like. That. Even though me in my early teenage years, from the ages of double figures, ten before my teenage years, I'm telling him, you need to go and get help. Because yeah. my friend's parents are not like this. Yeah. Like, you're giving me hell. I can't do certain things. I've agreed with my mum that I can go out. I'll be halfway down the stairs. My dad's coming and saying, you better go back upstairs and put on your pyjamas. Yeah. It's not going to work out because yeah. six o'clock is coming. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But when you're turning 18 yeah. and you're still getting the exact same speech you did 15 years ago, like... Yeah. Well, you would have been three then. Yeah, but... I would have been three, but I'm sure you're saying it to me <laughs> yeah, yeah. But It's just undiagnosed stuff. So he weren't diagnosed for his PTSD because he's too proud. People that are proud and don't want to talk about their mental health, we get it. But it is it causes all different things. So that led to him then Manifest, being definitely. so scared of the bad things he'd seen. They they he got too protective and yeah. And then his it anxiety developed, yeah. actually started to to eat him alive. So the anxiety went from something as little as they're five minutes late and they're in a car crash. Yeah. To I've got to do all of these things to keep my family safe. I've got to do. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it went to a different to level. even yeah to even if you're ten minutes late home now, you've caused his physical health some harm. Wow, so oh, you gave me a headache. You, or... Yeah, you've brought this on now. You've brought this headache on. And now, for the next evening, that I've, so I've, I've home at 10 past six, but now what I've created is an evening worth of bandana stuffed with lemons. We go off on tangents, boy. We do. When I used to... <laughs> we'll talk about the ADHD in another video. Um, <laughs> on the subject of undiagnosed mental health issues, angles, Obviously, again, we're encouraging you, if you are like resonating with anything that you're hearing, um, because she's mentioned um, post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, and OCD. And if, what your family's telling you. Yeah, like, exactly. So arguments. if you know someone who this sounds like, or if this is resonating with you, like you've got to talk to someone. Yeah. It's, there's no reason not to, do you exactly. know what I mean? But the other thing, that's why I'm, I'm really passionate about undiagnosed, um, because even just knowing what you've got gives you a peace of mind. You get to, you know, you can you can take you can a you can it. yeah you can take medication which yeah. sorts you out yeah or you can try natural remedies which sort you out. You so, can have a better way of life. And for me, I want my dad to enjoy his grandkids when I yeah. give it to him. Like I don't want him to 
hold back and be and so not, like yeah. yeah come to the park with us yeah. i can't because yeah. xyz and everything else on exactly. top and i can't do the lights undiagnosed mental health issues cause physical health issues what have you seen in your dad that has been like a physical ailment or like something wrong with him that you know is a manifestation of his mental health so they've said this to him the doctors have said it and my dad's not going to listen so me i'm i've taken such an interest because i'm his daughter i want to save my dad i want him to have the best quality of life so as soon as i got old enough to kind of take interest in it if that makes sense i started going to the hospital appointments to the physical ones where he got diagnosed with Minia's disease and all of this. So but what's Minia's disease? Wait, hold on. So, yeah, do you want to read it yeah. out? Yeah, I've um, looked these up as well because yeah. you know how to describe the symptoms, but then certain people it? can talk for an hour about something and still not get to the point. Yeah. So <laughs> I looked up a few little definitions that I could read. So Minia's disease is a disorder of the inner ear that causes episodes in which you feel like you're spinning and you have fluctuating hearing loss with a progressive, ultimately permanent loss of hearing. Yeah. Um, you get ringing in the ear, which is called tinnitus, um, and sometimes you have a feeling of fullness or pressure in your ear. So, like when you got your wa water in your ear. Yeah. What do you think has caused that? Because he walks around with cotton wool in his ear. As yeah. Well, so it? that's all. Yeah. So the cotton wool again. So you're already going through this hair loss, <laughs> hair this alternative loss. hearing situation. <laughs> that and my mum's got it as well. So they're a right pair together. But here. Do they shout? No, they don't shout, they just ignore each other, but they're not, they just can't hear each other. So if they turn their back to each other, my dad could have a whole sentence that my mum hasn't heard because they're back. And then he ain't even listening for the response he because he can't hear anyway. Because he's now turned away, yeah. It's, so sometimes they have like, which I think is working out, they're probably why they're still together because they've just got... <laughs> they've no one chats rubbish. Their lives is missing, yeah. No one chats rubbish to each other. Exactly, or any insults. Everyone thinks, goes, oh, everything I say, she just listens to. Exactly. No she, problem. Oh, you heard that then? Yeah, this is what they're thinking. <laughs> Where was I asked? Just from going to the appointments and listening to the doctors and they're blatantly saying to him, you cannot work yourself up, you've got to keep your blood pressure down, you know, you, you've got to keep your stress down, you've got to keep all of these things down, your depression's at its all-time high. Yeah. If we can control those, they've blatantly said it to him, numerous doctors, we've gone health, uh, private healthcare, we've gone NHS, we've gone to France and we've gone to Algeria. All different systems. All different systems to get the best like diagnosis so yeah. that we know how to move forward again like i'll do anything for my dad so we'll we'll do this yeah what they've all said is stress plays a major part and i know it because as an adult it affects me now like it's real but all of these things bring on the ringing that gets louder the ringing then brings on all the pressure in his head which brings on an episode the episode brings on shaking falling down because the world's spinning on you He's vomiting, he's definitely not making it up. He's vomiting because his head's spinning, so he can't grasp anything. Wow, and that's what it says. It yeah. says spinning and fluctuating yeah. hearing loss. So he couldn't go and hold on to a handlebar because the handlebar's spinning. Do you understand? Wow. The pressure gets, yeah, so the pressure gets you there. And what do we do moving forward to, again, for the quality of life? Like, it's about managing your stress levels and it's about managing your anxiety, your depression, your OCD, and all of these things because. I can't now say to my dad, don't do that, that light fixture thing. Don't, don't, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. do that. But late. that's going to cause him more anxiety. He has yeah. to do it. So yeah. it's about now we're at a point where it's all manifested so much. We're learning to live with the physical backlash of yeah. his mental health. But I, yeah. I truly believe that all the mental health led to the stress, that the anxiety leads to the stress, the OCD and not being able to... Do certain things, Lisa. So stress. he's not even going places he probably wants to go or be. Oh yeah, because not. the the rituals he'll have to do. He didn't, it's not worth it. He he missed out on seeing how I lived at uni because I lived in East London and he couldn't get there. So mm. my family's calm. We've had barbecues. My dad's not calm because he can't get there. I now wouldn't want my kids to miss out. So I'm in a place where I'm even more desperate to get him that help if yeah, that makes yeah. sense, so that he can enjoy what he missed with me, like school yeah. plays and going to the cinema because it's too loud. And I'm lucky, I come from a two-parent family, that's the truth, so my dad has been at home, but he has missed out on things yeah. due to his mental health. This was before he got physically ill. Yeah. So he can't go there because you can't drive like that, you can't yeah. do this like that, you, I can't touch your light fixtures like I touch mine. <laughs> just, just whatever he can do at home, he can't do at your house. Yeah, but if you tell him that you're coming over... Oh yeah, so tell me, you said... Um, that right. you can't just visit him. You visit him, he'll say to you straight away, oh, what a nice surprise, but he's genuinely what, taken about. Wait, what do you mean, like, if you've just turned up? That's if I've turned up. If I tell him, oh, Dad, I'm coming to see you tomorrow. Yes, of course, Lena, this is your house, you know, like, 
you as far as I'm concerned, you still live here. You, I've still got keys to my mum and dad's house. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, this is your house. Cool. Okay. At the end of the conversation, around what time? You know, like already. Before I say, he's already, time, he's already started. He's uh. So right, so I say to you know around dinner time, about six o'clock, seven o'clock. If I don't turn up, my phone's blowing. What at, at seven? At seven o'clock, my phone's Has blowing. Has he cooked? Where or? are you? No, no, no. Where are you? Just making sure you're safe. Oh, dad, stuck in traffic. Oh, okay. I bet you don't come because. You know, it's, it's getting late and you're running late and I don't want you to be stuck out there and I'm going to worry about you. And all of these factors that he's obviously gone through before he's even made that phone call because it's now 7.05. Have you ever turned up without yes. telling him the day before? Have yes. you? And what happens? Hi, Lena, what a lovely surprise. And then it's the, it's the marching up and down. And <laughs> So how are you getting home? I'm going to put you in a cab. Okay, so how long are you staying for? <laughs> oh, and then he stops packing a bag for me, like... When you go, you can have this. You can, yeah. You're so getting you in the mood to go, or and you've only just this arrived. This is it. So it'll put toilet roll in there, kitchen roll, things that a 33 year old woman can go and buy at a <laughs> weekly shop. And then he yeah. has to come downstairs. He has to walk me to the car. He has to watch me spot on the seatbelt and drive away. And he'll stand there and watch the car until it's outside. And then obviously with the coming back inside the house, there's the opening and closing of the door. There's all the lock stuff that's got to be done. There's all of these things. But the whole thing is like a mad ritual it's a, for it's him. A, yeah, it's, it's a... And if there's anyone missing from his house, it's, let me call who's missing now. My brother still lives there with him and my mum. Sam loves his way of life over there. Like yeah. He comes and goes as he pleases. But my dad phones his phone off. And Sam... <laughs> Sam is a young man who, see when he's lying about with his friends, he's not about to pick up the phone to my dad 15 times yeah. to let him know something he's told him the first time. And like, what's your dad asking? Like, are you safe? Are you all right? No. When are you coming home so I can lock the door? My brother has to give him times. I think it's going to be nine o'clock, dad. Okay, then we'll say 10 then, Sam. It's the ritual. Yeah. It's making it work with his ritual. And he needs to see it coming. If you don't see it coming, yeah, it's disturbed his whole thing. Flying. Getting on a plane. Oh my days. When was the last time you got on a plane? My Is... dad, my mum forces him out the country. Maybe once, twice a year. Oh, Whereas my mum travels yeah. once every month. Yeah. She's on stuff. So what, how does he actually get round to doing it? Like how does he actually Wheelchairs, get... canes. They have to let everyone go first and then he has to go himself. That bridge between that and the plane. You know the bridge that gets you on the plane? Both hands are out, knees are bent, like, sway down, wheelchairs, then the wheelchair's going too fast, so he has to get up, then he has to get back down, and it, he has to do that priority thing because it takes so long to get him through that bridge wow. and then settled into the plane and then everyone can get on or everyone's already on and then he comes on last. It's not easy for my mum because she's so used to it, she's just on her phone trying, <laughs> trying to get through the, the just situation. Just being distracted, just distracting herself. Whereas me, I'm like... You cannot be serious. You know, like, so... Yeah. As a family, we all have different ways of kind of dealing with it, but... Your mum's just so used to it. I think, I think my mum has the patience of a saint. I think, yeah. point blank. That's genuinely, that's all I think it is. I don't, and I moved out when I was 18 because yeah. of it. I moved out because of my dad's madness. Like, my yeah. dad has locked me out of my house so many times because it's that if you're not home by this oh, certain yeah. time now... I think I remember this. I used to come back to your house and yeah. sleep because I've been locked out again. Yeah. Leaving your house, I've obviously not made it home on time. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm back. I'm out. Yeah. I remember that. Uh, or he'd call me on the Nokia. When I lived in Bridge. Yeah, he'd call me on the Nokia and he'd say, hey, wherever you are, better you ask them very nicely if you can stay over because you have four minutes to get there and it doesn't, I can't hear the wind. <laughs> you know, like he's saying stuff that... <laughs> I can't hear the wind in the this background. Time. So it was a very And you know what, I think time. it is difficult it is difficult having to deal with it. It's difficult knowing that, like, Dad, there's something wrong here. Yeah. Like, now, I think knowing what OCD is, knowing that he did those things because of things he couldn't control, yeah. it's heartbreaking to know that, like, guys in general yeah, don't like to be vulnerable. Not don't. that we're generalising. Oh, my gosh, I've just contradicted myself, but... But, it, but no, it's but that it's brave, true. manly... And I'm speaking out on it, particularly, because it's affecting my life a lot, and... Yeah. I look at myself sometimes and I think, is that because of my dad or is that really me? Or is yeah. that just me? Yeah. Or is that, That's is that how because much of I'm, an impact it's It like. has, absolutely. Same thing with my brother. Sometimes we sit down as adults now and have a conversation and he'll be like, do you think that's because of dad? Or yeah. do you reckon that's just... But I see my own weaknesses that I'm not blaming my dad for, but yeah. that 
I can. Well, you didn't. Have you had? Have you ever had counselling? No. There are a lot of organisations that offer services to the family members of people that have a, a mental health issue because of the way that they could behave and how it could affect you. Uh, for you to understand them, for you to know what's real and what's, what's not. not yeah. Oh, low battery. So much has gone on without any help or assistance that. It's hard to undo what's already been done, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. So now we're just dealing with the physical. That's what he takes medication for. If someone's watching this and they are resonating with some of the stuff that you've said, so they're sitting here thinking, I do the stuff that Lena's describing her dad does. Yeah. Um, and they could be young, so they haven't got a family yet, or they could have a family already, and they haven't been diagnosed, and some of them might not have even clocked that there's something wrong, but then yeah. there are some people that could be watching that have clocked something's wrong but don't want to talk about it. What advice would you give to them? Find someone that you trust. Just let you know that what you're going through is recognised. Just to let you know that much. At yeah. least. I didn't have anyone that could relate to what I was going through. We yeah. all had a laugh about it. My friends would be like, oh, it's your dad calling again. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah. But he's going through shit over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So talk to someone you trust. Let them know that, A, this is what you're going through or this is what you think a family member is going through and see what advice they can give you because sometimes that just points you in the right direction and then yeah. your heart will know what to do because they're, yeah. they're your family member. Yeah. It's you who's going through it. You, it. No one can tell you what to do but you, if mm. that makes sense. You have yeah. to follow your heart. So, so it's like, just like open that. up, just talk to open someone. Up. Go to your GP, time. it's confidential. Go yeah. to your GP because you, you have no get, one that you want to talk to. About. You can get advice, which doesn't mean yeah. you have to go and seek anything. Yeah, any, they will just, exactly. Yeah, it's just, step. What would you say to somebody who is in this position you were in? So if there's a young person watching this who lives with a parent who does wild things, yeah. or not even a young person now, so an adult like you, yeah. what would you want to tell them in regards to how to deal with it themselves? Even I though think, you're still on the journey yourself. I'm still on the journey myself, but what I have found help with, and it's really quite crazy, because even though my dad isn't really admitting to his problems like that, he's just a lot more open and understanding to making our lives better. So he might be subconsciously admitting it before he's consciously admitting it, okay. but it's a step forward. Oh, I'll do this to make you guys happier. Exactly, but, but it's not killing him. It's yeah. just meeting us in the, in the middle where he wouldn't meet us before. Like, mm. But what has helped me is... In this day and age, there are things online that you can tactfully bring up or conversate with that person about. So yeah. if I find something online or if I find a YouTube video or if I find anything at all, like even down to this thing that me and you are doing now, when you've done it, I'm going to go straight to my dad and show it to him so that he can see how open I am yeah. about it. I'm not embarrassed about what my dad's gone through or what he's going through or how it affects me. I just want my dad to have a better way of life. That's yeah. all I care about. And once that's done, I can breathe easier. Like yeah. my anxiety might yeah. not be so high myself, if that makes sense. Yeah. The best thing, if you love that person, if you think you're going through it and you think you're affecting someone that you love by that, seek help, whether it means just taking the steps of doing your own research in your own room, like privately. Take yeah. the steps, just take the steps and your journey will take you to yeah. that healing place. I, I, I believe that. So if it was someone as well that their, it's their dad or their mum or their sister, would you just um, advise them to speak to them or... Yeah, d or don't help, give up. Or do your own research to help them. Do your research first. Because yeah, so again, you, you know don't how want to offend them, you so, don't want to make them worse. Yeah, and when you when you research somebody's condition, you can understand them. Yeah, And you can, you you can identify better. when, oh, okay, so he's doing that because of this or she's doing that because of exactly. that. Exactly. So you are like, okay, I'm going to be more patient. You know when, yes. You yeah. know when to turn a blind eye, you know when to address things, you know when to be tactful, you know when to be... Severe. Yes. Even yes. there's been some times where, not saying I spoke to my dad a certain type of way, but be I've been, harsh, yeah, yeah, I've had to give him a bit of tough love sometimes where I want him to snap out of certain things so that he doesn't miss out on certain yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's come to and he said thank you to me. Does that make sense? Yeah, and yeah, it makes yeah. me know that I'm doing... He knows, yeah. But, but also you've got his best interest at heart. 100%. My dad, again, like I said, it's still a journey and we're still learning how to deal with him and help him at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a thin line, but... You're not alone. There are a lot of people. Reach out to people who's going through the same thing. Like yeah. we're all online. Every even message online. Lena. Sorry, yeah, message me. Sorry. Even message Lena. Her message um, me. Her Instagram will be down down there. below. I can um, give yeah, you just tips on how her. I handled any one situation, and I can also let you know when certain things don't work because yeah. I've had backlashes yeah. of stuff too. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Um, please share this video with anyone that you think will benefit from it. Anyone who is going through anything that we've discussed or just 
just to raise awareness about mental health conditions, it's there are so many um, and they can be managed in a way that can see you live in a productive and a you know normal life. Yeah, just a better way. Yeah, of life. just a better life. Yeah, so just living your best life. Exactly. So share this. Um, feel free to write comments um, with questions and feel free to DM yeah. Missy here. But um, but also anything, any experiences you have or any tips you have or if there's anything you want to share about your own experiences or someone you know with anxiety, OCD, yes. depression or post-traumatic yeah, stress I'm disorder. Yeah, I'm reaching out. Talk to me. Yeah, just, 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 we want, we want to know more. Yeah. Like, obviously, we don't, we don't, I don't know about these things. Yeah. Um, and you only know because of your dad. So, we have to read this to get definitions because yeah. we, we, we're learning too. So, yeah. please do share with us so we can, we can know more and we can hear different perspectives. Isn't it? <laughs> so, and yeah, have a blessed day. Bye. Bye.